Sports Edge. A very warm welcome to you. We do appreciate you for tuning in. It's that time to talk sports. Once again on Galactic Television, it is Sports Edge and I am Onyechi Ogu. I'm not alone in the studio, so I have with me Anita Obadina in the studio. Good afternoon to you, Anita. Good afternoon. Nice yeah. to have you on more time on the show. Oh, of course, we know that we are anticipating that game that's going to be going down when it comes to Delta State in Asaba. The Super Eagles against the Charles for their last qualifying fixture in the African qualifiers. But before we talk about that, we go to the grassroots football. So we're talking about the NPFL right now. Now, these are the reschedule fixtures and there we played yesterday and we did see wonderful goals coming in from all the whole the whole of the whole clubs you know wonderful showpiece yesterday from the MPFL side but let's look at when we played yesterday Lobby Stars against Rivers United Lobby Stars having the win with two goals to one Katsuna United against MFM MFM without their main coach today is political uh, drawing now um, away from home you know with Katsuna United Cardiff City against Cardiff Phyllis Cardiff Phyllis having the win with two goals Yobe Desert Stars against Abia Warriors with Abia Warriors having three goals having the win so I'm excited now results from the weekend away teams are uh, showing dominance uh, in these uh, some of these games mm. and looking That's at the true. ruby stars that uh, secure rally may continue to go scoring from after scoring at the weekend for them in the calf uh, calf champions league is stepping it up by scoring the first goal uh if it eventually got them the win against rivers united off a free uh, rivers united got a goal back from a, uh, from a free kick from a motor okay. but the biggest way has got to be this game can united up against mfm mfm without their coaches on national team duty with the under 23 they picked their very first point away from home mm. this season mm. mfm usually struggle when they're that's why the quality of football they play uh the struggle but this time they scored first courtesy of a worldly glow wow. uh, a worldly goal wow. from chijo kiakone to a one shot uh, a, a sweet pass from uh from uh, elijah akoni one touch he didn't allow the ball to land i uh, was flipped over and he touched it once and wow I'm what sure. a goal to be it's gonna be bad of the top assist oh. for the season top assist and top goal of the season Come in on. that single goal and mfm uh then cashier United had to equalize uh, a penalty was also saved in that game okay. I get, uh, for MFM. Uh, their goalkeeper saved the penalty, so that made it all the more interesting. Canopilla surprised us a lot uh, getting this win, a 2 0 win. Uh, I talked about it in Yuma uh, in Wagua yesterday, and it was one of the goal scorers stepping up since <laughs> he returned uh, from his field trip to sign for a club abroad. Mm. He's back among the goal scorers for Canopilla. Then uh, another big result has got to be Abia Warriors up against Yobe Desert Stars. Mm. Obi Samson scoring a brace uh, for Abia Warriors in that game, ensuring that uh, they won that game clean and clear. Uh, what and that has been the hallmark of this season. Very interesting, despite the fact that TV is not available. Uh, we thought a hey, TV is not available. A lot of robberies, uh, home robberies, will happen, but that has not happened. I'm, I can put my money on it that this is the season with the highest away win. Mm. Uh, and so most far interesting this season, I must say. Exactly. I've been seeing a lot of surprises and a lot of upsets. Who we'll say? Definitely mm. so, and it's really happening, and it's getting even more. So I'm now imagining what we have, what we have TV, mm. uh, showing us these exciting goals, like the one I talked about about Kuneto or this game that NFP won in favor of Abayoros. We are far away from home mm. in Yobe. It makes it all more. Then later today, Rangers yes, and Sunshine Rangers Stars. And Sunshine Stars. Uh, for Rangers, I was listening to the coach at uh, Bring on Gumbote, talking about that the journey to return to the country that they've tasted the continent, they enjoyed it very well. So they want to return to the country. And so they're going to do the same thing Lobby Stars did over here, exactly. coming back as a wounded lion. Yeah, back to back games they've won in the league now, oh, they're yeah? scheduled games. So oh, Rangers yeah? want to copy the same. Uh, since Ogubo is saying is that he has already worked on the psyche of his players mm. uh, to come down from playing confidential clubs to playing at the Nigerian League. And mm. they played just four matches out of 11 that they should play. So wow. by the time they keep picking up the points, they might be back among the top uh, three at the end of the season because they have to avoid relegation also. Of course, fixtures for today, the 21st of March. Firstly, we're going to be seeing Enugu Rangers go against Sunshine Stars. All that's going to be happening in the Nigerian Professional Football right. League. Well, let's now talk about what they now we did hear that Francisco Ovega has finally moved to a Chinese um, um, Super League side. Talking about Shanghai, Shanghai. Looking at it right now, this is going to be a good one for her. She has tested um, um, Sweden, you know, Washington Spirit and all that. And now moving to China is something, it's a new page for her to open. A, a definitely no new page. And I think she's smart on the money for me. Okay. With the way she had managed her career. She's a lady, uh, come uh, on. Of course, smart uh, not only uh, for me, footballers get to do that. Mm. Uh, she, she plans she's herself well. Uh, from Sweden, she moved to uh, Washington Street. I, as against other Nigerians who had moved to the Women's Soccer League in the WSL and the uh, United States, that barely survived. Okay. She played with a, a, with a level of longevity mm. uh, in the United States uh, Women's League over there. Uh, she had 
during the break as uh, she was the first to play in the Spanish La Liga for a Nigerian uh, Super Falcons player where she played uh, for uh, um, for Atletico Madrid feminine team. Yeah. Uh, one of the other, she was also the first African and first Nigerian to play in the Australian League, one of the breaks. As her season and her plan has already, uh, has always worked out very well for her. And now, uh, during, her, la, during her last season, I watched this week, one of the periods she was injured, she mm -hmm. went for a coaching course mm -hmm. sponsored by her club. That's something that we actually planned her career and what she wants there. And now, I think basically just add some little bit of more cash with the quality of the Chinese League. The Chinese Women League is top notch. You cannot deny them that. Uh, and she goes, uh, she's going there with a rich CV, mm -hmm. uh, playing in the United States League, mm -hmm. playing with Atletico Madrid in Europe. And that makes it all the more ex exciting for her. Uh, Francis Del Vega, and I cannot just but wish her the best in a new adventure in China. Of course, we're going to be wishing the best to Francisca Odega over there. But let's look at what happened. We're going to be looking so quickly at all the um, invited players and what they had to say concerning the game against the Chels. They're going to be giving a chance to play against the Chels and the international friendly against Egypt. Now we have in the Freke F. Young, we have um, Valentine Uzon at four, Uko and Udo, and also Paul Onachu, the guy that is um, going to draw us guaranteed 45 minutes of play. Let's listen to them and we come back. We'll be talking more in the beautiful world of sport. My name is Cindy Frank I'm a utility player. I play for Aqua United Football Club. I'm happy to be here in the Spurs Park. And if I'm called to play against Egypt or Egypt, I'll give my 100%. Thank you. My name is Paul Onachu. I play for FC Midland Denmark. I'm happy to be invited to the Super Eagle squad. If I'm among the squad against Egypt and Seychelles, I'm going to do my best for my country. My name is Valentine James Osonwapo. I play for Yimba Football Club. And by the special grace of God, if I'm being selected to play against Seychelles and Egypt, I'll give my best for my country. Thank you. My name is Ikowem Udauti from Enyiba International AFC. I'm optimistic to be here with the Team Super Eagles. If I'm selected to play against Egypt and Seychelles, I will try my best and make Nigerian proud. to be invited to the Super Eagle squad. If I'm among the squad against Egypt and Seychelles, I'm going to do my best for my country. My name is Valentine James Osonwapo. I play for Yimba Football Club. And by the special grace of God, if I'm being selected to play against Seychelles and Egypt, I'll give my best for my country. Thank you. My name is Ikowem Udauti from Enyiba International AFC. I'm optimistic to be here with the Team Super Eagles. If I'm selected to play against Egypt and Seychelles, I will try my best and make Nigerian proud.
Emmanuel now joining us in the studio is Emmanuel Akin Dubua. Welcome back if you're just joining us here on Sports Edge. Good afternoon to you, Emmanuel. Good afternoon. Nice to yeah. have you on the show. Thank Sports you. now we are saying that Ikowen Udo said, Oh my best is what I'm gonna try to do. But it seems um his compatriots talking about the under twenty three guys who are star studded, you know, having the likes of Taiwa Wuni, having the likes of Villarreal um player Shukweze over there and Spazius forward also over there, Kerike there. But we're still beaten by two goals to nil against Libya. A disappointing result, no doubt, for the dream team. Uh, that was a team that had all, uh, I mean, the, the best under 23 players you could call across Nigeria. Uh, players who have, who have international exposure, mm. haven't played at the under 17 and under 20 at some point. And I mean, to cap it all up, they had the captain of the last generation, Azubiki Okechuku, who lead leading this the club. So yeah. you felt, uh, I mean, there could have been something going for them. Uh, it's a disappointing game. Uh, the reports were heard was that the team were all coordinated. Mm. There were there were lack of discipline in their possession. And yes, they, they were only going to go in a team, in a t like a team. They, they, they never played. They, they didn't play as a team. Come on. Uh, I think um, th th that boils down on the kind of profile these players I mean, brought into the team. But I'm, oh, I'm sure is it the time they had to train together? Well, that was the only time they could have because CAF had to program that qualifiers within the international window to get the best of players for all the teams. You know, the under 23 competition is still not recognized in the FIFA calendar. So, but all the same, I think they can still do the job. It, it just become more difficult for them mm. on Monday when they take on the Libyans. And the Libyans will be coming now knowing that they have the advantage to play a lot of defensive game. But we, I think uh, we have a team that can unlock. It wasn't really a poor game from them yesterday, mm. just a lack of tactical discipline. And maybe some some level of um, uh, overconfidence in their game. Okay, history. looking at the fact that um, Libya have not been able, they've been having this political political crisis, and they've not been able to train that well for competitions like this. And with the fact that we had a star studded team, and we went over there and we're beating two goals, do you feel these guys need um, a pat in the back? Uh, no, definitely not. <laughs> uh, because I, I actually got, uh, got to watch the game, and basically Nigeria had most of the possession, but mm. uh, the major problem from that team was the way, uh, they, what they did with their possession. Mm. Uh, immediately after we considered the first goal, I felt the, the central defense, which was uh, a, a thoroughly local-based lad uh, mm. that they used, who also have not had enough time to uh, train together, basically, because what the coaching crew has been doing over time was elimination by substitution. Mm. Uh, if somebody is not good in it, they kept bringing and adjusting, trying to find the best cup, and eventually they got the guys they used. Uh, the def on the two goals, the defense panicked uh, because uh, there were, uh, were situations that they could actually save uh, at least the first goal. Even the second goal, later we got red carded. Red card, uh, yeah. The goalkeeper, Adamo Abubaka, got red carded. Uh, running out after uh, doing a counter attack by the Libyans, uh, trying to stop the ball. He handled the ball outside of out the of box. Out of his, uh, his space. Uh, yeah, uh, out of the box, mm -hmm. and so he got red carded then. The second half, we were dominating. Uh, the goalkeeper of Libya had to make about three important saves mm -hmm. uh, to stop us from equalizing before mm -hmm. they eventually got uh, the second goal uh, that basically capped it over for the ball. Overall, uh, Hopefully the team will have enough time to train together and turn it around. I, I don't think we can press the panic button here, but I think what, what this build brings into question, if you are lucky enough to have these young stars, uh, most of our exciting stars for, from the youth level coming for this one, what happens when the qualifying game, the next qualifying level, uh, gets to a stage where you can, it does not fall under FIFA window? Mm. What would they do? So I'm hoping the technical crew will build the crux of this team around the local base land. That was what CSI did uh, last time at work. A sprinkle of one or two foreign base that could take a t take time out of their club schedule. Mm -hmm. Because if these if this are not on the FIFA calendar, then you struggle to get these players back. This falls under a FIFA international weekend holiday. That's why we're having this start. What happened if they are not there? So uh, it's basically an advice for these young stars, uh, basically, uh, for the coaching crew, uh, to think about their whole strategy overall. Because in November, the European League will still be hot and going. Most of these stars will not be available. You will need the local business that you can convince the coaches to release them on time to play for them. OK, now looking at it right now, we can see the starting 11 for um, that Imama Apakabo had um, deployed over there. Now, we had seen some. Um, Wonderful names over there, names that are well known. But did he make any mistake or maybe displacement putting in someone to start in that is not supposed to start? And benching who is not supposed to bench? Well, I, I saw the starting level and I thought that was a pretty decent starting level. Okay. Um, Tawa Wuni, Samuel Chuke is the leading up front. Uh, Kelechi Wakali and Azubike in the middle. There was Olabiro on the flanks as mm -hmm. well. Uh, maybe I should. Maybe I would have been more confident uh, with Orema this starting at left side of Ad Adamo. Okay, we're supposed to have that visual there where uh, we see the starting. But uh, all in all, I think that, that, that it was just a bad day in the office for the boys. 
Um, like uh, and it was rightly said, they were a bit overconfident mm. with the ball. They were a bit bullish. Mm. And we've seen even European teams get punished where they show so, such a like a okay. attitude. We've seen it with the likes of Real Madrid, uh, Paris Saint-Germain the last uh, few weeks. So uh, they will learn their lesson. Good thing for them is that the game is not done yet. Uh, I think on a good day, this team can, can, can uh, get okay, as now much Looking as at the fact goals. that he had so much faith in Adamu um, in the, to man the box right now, and he was red carded. Now, we have some other goalkeepers that went along with um, the Flying Eagles goalkeeper over there. Uh, Madrid, that eventually came in after the uh, red card. The, uh, the goalkeeper was a bit richer, so he, he's, an, uh, he's an exciting young lad with Nassau United. That's Adam Obubaka. He has uh, not gotten um, he, he has proven exposure. himself for the local ball. I think the exposure at that international team was not there. Another fact you have to have to consider if you watch the game closely, the pitch, it was uh, mm. artificial love and it really disturbed most of these stars uh, that we had that we were parading. Okay. Also, another major fault I saw in that game where they are wing backs, uh, Drew and Lazarus. Uh, as much as it is more there for wings back, wing back to constantly parade and up and down going forward, uh, most of the time they were caught napping because they spend more time in the attacking uh, side of the opponent than uh, doing their defensive. That means they really didn't we, get to burn. Uh, and then we were caught at basically. There was lack of understanding of who will go, who will move. Then the pair of Akpuji and Egbe, they struggled in terms of understanding. Okay. Uh, if, if you want to first go closely, how can uh, an attacker in between our two central defenders have the ball and still have the chance to shoot beyond your goalkeeper? Mm. Basically, you could have closed him out or uh, try and put a, a little bit of pressure on him to stop him from taking the shot or reduce the uh, uh, fierceness in that shot, basically. Okay. So they struggle in terms of communicating who, 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 who will be taking a certain responsibility when they are been attacked. So over time, when they have, by the time they come back, between now and Sunday, that they get to we train together, to they will finalize all, all the little loopholes in the team and they should be bounce, uh, they should bounce back uh, on Monday. Okay, now let me have some um, few seconds with you. Um, what do you think should really be corrected? He has said uh, he, was, he had picked up some little um, itches over there. Can you just tell us, just in a few seconds? Well, uh, what, what needs to be corrected is the team needs to define their play. Mm. They need to be, there needs to be urgency in their game. Okay. Uh, the attackers need to impose themselves on the Libyans. I think they were a bit too soft mm. on the Libyans. Okay. They need to impose themselves. I, I still think we can, we can turn this game on its head. Uh, it's a learning curve, a realization that nobody's a minnow in the mm. game anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think they, will, they, they should get it up. Okay, now we'll be hoping that they should get it up when Monday comes underway in Aqaba. We'll get to see where Nigeria gets to host Libya in the second leg of the qualifiers. That's all we can take for today. Thank you, gentlemen, for being on the show. Thank Do you appreciate your presence. In its Sports Ed Galaxy Television, I am Unyechi Ozi. Do have a pleasant afternoon. And how did he set it up? Off his feet first. He punched off the feet. I think that's, that, that's something he hasn't been doing enough, and Fury has. The history.
an year iconic game. comeback, in it? You know what I mean? A two and a half year out the ring, ten stone ballooned, mental health problems. I just showed the world tonight, everyone suffering with mental health, that you can come back and it can be done. Everybody out there who has the same problems that I've been suffering with, I did that for you guys. You know the truth. Everybody knows I won that fight. And if I can come back from where I come from, then you can do it too. So get up, get over it, and let's do it. Seek help and let's do it together as a team. I did it for you guys. This one is bad. It's not mine. The other one is.